Hey Vault Dwellers, JV here, and today I'm sharing new perk cards for Fallout 76. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more Fallout 76 videos just like this. Before we take a look at some of those newer perks, let's talk about the big news, and that's that Bethesda has announced the new beta time for Fallout 76. Your trip to Appalachia continues this weekend with the beta on Xbox One Saturday, October 27th, 5 p.m. Eastern to 7 p.m. Eastern. See you there. I think this news is shocking for a lot of us. A lot of us did expect this beta to be up every single day, and Bethesda never explicitly said that, so that was a bit of an assumption on our part. But I think as well, people were thinking, okay, well, you're pre-ordering for the beta. You're going to play it early. It's going to go until November, you know, a few days before launch. Maybe we're going to be able to play every single day. It's a bit of an assumption on everyone's part, I believe. And while it is disappointing, it does make sense. Yes, the beta was used as a promotional opportunity to get people to pre-order the game and kind of sign up and get on board, but it's also used for Bethesda to better the game, to identify issues, bugs, problems, of which there were still plenty in the beta outside of the stress test, and fix them. And I believe this will give them an opportunity. This is several days for them to go under the hood, fix things, tune them, and then circle back around and have us play again. Two things specifically that disappoint me are the fact that this one's only going to be two hours. I feel like that's just such little time to actually dive in and play a game like this because you get so immersed, you get so lost in the experience. And also it's 5 p.m. Eastern to 7 p.m. Eastern, which is another kind of unfortunate thing for people that are playing over in Europe. Now we do have to know, we do have to keep in mind that the majority of their audience is American in the US, that's just a fact. But since it is a weekend, it would have been nice to make that time a little more convenient for people across the pond, you know? Maybe an hour earlier would have been nicer. Overall, I would say don't be surprised if the beta has another gap and if the hours are kind of weird, if they're only two hours or as long as eight hours, in the future. We know that PlayStation 4 and PC are going to have a beta starting on the 30th, but again, that may be the first one. So you guys on those platforms also need to realize that this beta may not be every single day, or it may change and it may turn into every single day once they fix things. On to the main topic for today, there were two or maybe three levels worth of new perks that people uncovered. Those people that maximized their time and their experience and got above level eight. I am aware of all of the perks up to level eight, but beyond that point, I didn't get past level eight, so I didn't find them. Other people did, however, and a great place where you can go and build out your character, what I used as a resource and reference for this video with the new perks, is Nukes and Dragons. This person made this build calculator that I've been sharing on my Vault 2017 Discord. It gives you the entire pool of perk cards that we know of up to this point and allows you to plan out your character, and I find it very useful. So link in the description below, you guys should check that out. So we're gonna start with the new strength perks that we weren't aware of before. We don't know what the level unlocks are going to be on these perks, but I'm assuming they're nine, 10, and 11. Let's just stay with that for now. First off is Basher. Gun bashing does plus 25% damage with a 5% chance to cripple, and it's got two ranks. I was never a big fan of bashing in Fallout 4. I believe there was a Basher type perk in Fallout 4 as well, and for the most part, I ignored that perk because I didn't find gun bashing that useful. If you got ammunition, why aren't you using it? I don't have enough experience with this game to know whether Basher is better or more useful this time around, and I probably won't know until I play more. So for now, this is not a perk card I'm gonna go after, but it is an option. Next, we have Shotgunner. Shotguns do plus 10% damage. You've got three ranks and it goes up to 20%, just like the other weapon-related perk cards. For example, we've got one for non-automatic pistols, one for automatic pistols, one for rifles. Riflemen, you guys are aware of that. So this is one of those X weapon type is increased by Y percent per rank. This allows you to really specialize in shotguns. We've got another shotgun related perk, which makes me excited in perception that we're about to talk about. But shotgunner is great. Pump action shotgun is one of my favorite new weapons. So I'll definitely be grabbing this when I can. For perception perks, we've got crack shot. All pistols have 10% more range and accuracy when sighted. That's got three ranks. So that is specifically 
pistols, specifically pistols that have sighted mods on them. This makes sense. You're under the perception category, which dictates your VATS accuracy. And I believe range and accuracy affect those metrics outside of VATS and inside of VATS. For example, I believe there's some damage fall off in this game. Again, I'm gonna have to do some more research and testing to figure that out, but this should be helpful in and outside of VATS. We also have Skeet Shooter. Shotguns have improved accuracy and spread, and there's three ranks for this perk as well. Very specific, it's for the shotgun, and again, it's around accuracy, makes sense for perception. So if you wanna run a shotgun build, Shotgunner and Skeet Shooter allow you to do that fairly early on in the game. Moving on to endurance cards now, we've got natural resistance. You are 30% less likely to catch a disease from the environment. There's three ranks for this one. We actually do have a level requirement for this one, and it's level 10. So no matter what, this will unlock at level 10, and it will be an option for you. So catching a disease from the environment, we're not 100% sure what that means. Perhaps that's drinking from a stream. Perhaps that's sleeping in a dirty bed or being outside during a rad storm. That's what I'm thinking, you know, will dictate an environmental disease. Next is vaccinated. Chance of catching a disease from creatures is reduced by 30%, and you've got three ranks there too. Very similar, but specific to creatures. Each time you get hit by a certain creature, it might be diseased, for example. You could see that sort of nameplate identifier on certain enemies like rad roaches, for example. I believe you have a heightened chance of catching a disease, so vaccinated would prevent you from that. And then we have hydrofix. Chems generate 50% less thirst, and that's two ranks. If you guys didn't know, every single time you take a stem pack, it generates even more thirst. Your thirst meter goes down. And so if you got Hydrofix in place, then that effect is reduced. We've got one new Charisma card, and that's EMT. Players you revive come back with health regen for 15 seconds. Three ranks on that one. Very, very specific to playing with a group as most Charisma cards are. You wouldn't even want to take this unless you're playing with others. Under Intelligence, we have Demolitions Expert. Your explosives do plus 20% damage, five ranks there. That's one of the first five rank cards I've even seen in this game. You have to have five copies of this thing to combine together in order to create a five cost Demolitions Expert card to get that to plus 100% damage. But without a doubt, I use some of the explosives in the beta. They're very, very strong. So if you invest heavily in this and you decide I want to be an explosives based character, it's going to benefit you big time. Agility has two more pistol based perks, which is kind of blowing my mind. First off, Gorilla, your automatic pistols do plus 10% damage, three ranks there, very similar to Shotgunner. Rank 2 is going to get you 15%, rank 3 is going to get you 20%, specific to automatic pistols. So keep that in mind. And then we've got Packing Light. Your pistols weigh 25% less, and you've got three ranks there. Gunslinger, Gunrunner, Crackshot, Gorilla, and Pack and Light. That's within the first 10 to 11 levels in the game. You've got all of those pistol-based options. I don't know about you guys, but Pistol is looking very strong in the early game. Finally, we've got two new luck cards that are very goofy, but it makes sense because it is luck. First is Junk Shield. Carry junk to gain up to 10 damage and energy resistance, and then you can't wear power armor with that. You've got three ranks. So I don't know if this means if you're just carrying junk at all, you immediately get that extra resistance, but that's an interesting way to supplement your overall resistances with your armor, and I wonder if that's actually worth a perk point. Finally, we have good with salt. Food will spoil 30% more slowly. You've got three ranks there. I was noticing in my beta playthrough, just, you know, that limited time that when I was making food, I was not paying attention to the fact that it does spoil. So either good with salt is a good idea to have just, you know, in your back pocket while you're making food and so you could save it more efficiently or you just want to wait until you're in a camp until you can make your food and actually, you know, make it as needed. So juggling food and the hunger meter and the water meter is something I've really had to get used to. So I'm going to put some more playtime in with the future beta opportunities and try to understand those systems more. Overall, these new perks tell me several things. Number one, there's going to be so many perks in this game, guys. We are not even equipped to handle how many perks are going to be in this game. Just to give you a visual, this is my personal perk collection that I use to kind of show you guys this is where these perks are unlocked because 
people don't know there are perk unlock levels. Some of these perks you can't use until a certain level, and that's what I've charted out here. The red spots are the ones where at this certain level, you're not unlocking a card for that specific special category. And then the yellow ones are kind of projected. We don't know the unlock levels for those. We just know that they exist. Imagine a very similar looking chart going all the way down to like level 50. I don't know if that's gonna happen. There could be a certain point, maybe it's like level 30, where these start to trail off and we get one or two per category every time we rank up, but maybe not. Bethesda has said the word hundreds when talking about how many perk cards are in this game. So the fact that they are so specific in certain categories so far leads them to believe that there will be hundreds. I'm very eager to see what the level 12 through 15 cards might be when people are leveling up further in the next beta test over the weekend. Our Vault 2017 tip of the day is to consider the weight of stim packs. Stim packs weigh a lot in this game. They weigh one whole pound each. And when you're picking up a lot of junk to repair all of your items and craft new ones, it weighs you down a lot. So consider taking Traveling Pharmacy. I know it's a strange perk, I know it doesn't seem useful, but for builds outside of melee, it will be worth your while to reduce the weight of stim packs and other chems that you're picking up in your adventure. Everyone starts out with one strength point, and that's probably the most useful one until Pack Rat at level 7. In the comment section, tell me what level you managed to hit in the first beta session. Share your thoughts below. If you enjoyed the video, remember to subscribe and hit the bell for more Fallout 76 content like my last video where we discuss a game starter guide. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.